Stefan had warm brown eyes and dark curly hair, and uh, he was a good hugger. We met when we were only 16 at a high school dance. And when he died, we were 50. It was about 9.30 a.m. when he called. And he told me he was on the 105th floor and he'd been trying to find a way out. And he told me that he, you know, he hadn't had any success and now the stairwell was full of smoke. I asked if it hurt for him to breathe. And he paused for a moment and then said, no, he loved me enough to lie. We stopped talking about escape routes, and then we just began talking about all the happiness we shared during our lives together. I told him that I wanted to be there with him, tie with him. But he said, no, no, he wanted me to live a full life. And as the smoke got thicker, he just kept whispering, I love you, over and over. I just wanted to crawl through the phone lines to him and hold him. One last time. Then I heard a sharp crack, followed by the sound of, a, of an avalanche. It was the building beginning to collapse. I called his name into the phone over and over. Then I just sat there, pressing the phone to my heart. I think about that last half hour with Sean all the time. I remember how I... I didn't want that day to end, terrible as it was. I, I didn't want to go to sleep because as long as I was awake, it was still a day that I'd shared with Sean. You know, and he kissed me goodbye before leaving for work. I could still say that was just a little while ago. That was only this morning. And uh, looking back on all that has happened since he died and the causes I fought for and the, the things I've done, I, I just think of myself as living life for both of us now. And I like to think that Sean would be proud of me.